Good morning, folks. Welcome to the Regional Transportation Committee of Dr. Cog for Tuesday, September 14th. And we are called to order. Are we have a quorum, uh, Cam, Ron, just for uh, documentary yes, purposes? Okay, yes, we have a quorum. And uh, the second item on our agenda is public comment. And uh, so I want to put out a call to ask if there is anyone in attendance who has a comment to offer to uh, the RTC to please raise your hand or signify uh, any other Zoom way that you can. And I'll ask Cam if we have anybody who is uh, asking to make public comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, at this time, I don't see any hands raised for public comment. Okay, very good. Um, Third item is uh, the meeting summary from last month's RTC meeting as attachment A. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming folks have had a chance to review it. And uh, if there are no changes, we will accept them. Uh, Doug, uh, we don't need a vote on that. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you. All right, we have four action items today. And uh, let's, uh, I, I went over them with, uh, with my team yesterday and uh, uh, I just ask that folks be uh, concise and to the point so that we can get through this. Uh, let's go with item four. Uh, is Josh here and he's going to do the presentation? Yes, I am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, thank you. Didn't see you up here. So we do have um, six proposed amendments to the Transportation Improvement Program for your consideration this morning. Um, three of them are new projects. Uh, the first is a new uh, new to the tip uh, design pool for region one. This is to uh, get some design work underway so that once construction funding becomes available, those projects can move forward. Um, at this time, there are six pool projects proposed to be included in this pool for a total of $10.5 million. Uh, you'll notice uh, the tip ID number does start with 2007. We're, we're rolling this project forward from the old 2007 to 2012 tip. So that is uh, why that is the case. The next project is for uh, a new Region 4 mobility hub pool. Um, at this time, there is one pool project for the Firestone Longmont mobility hub included within this for a total of $13 million. Next is the SH7 and 95th Street intersection improvements. Um, and 95th Street is also SH42. Uh, this is part of um, some of the overall improvements that are happening along the SH7 corridor. Um, this is for $13.438 uh, million, includes a general purpose lane, bus lane, and bike lanes along SH7 um, at this intersection. The uh, next project on the list is actually related back to that one. Uh, this is uh, adjusting the pool projects in the region for RPP pool to include that SH7 and 95th Street project because that project has RPP funds attached to it. There's no funding being included on that pool project. We're just including it for tracking purposes so we can keep track of where all of the RPP funding is throughout the TIP. The next project is adding uh, $20 million in state legislative funding to the I-70 noise walls project uh, to uh, fund the next uh, three phases of work in that project. And then finally, there are some adjustments to the Region 1 Mobility Hub Pool, um, adding $19.3 million in state uh, transit legislative funds in order to fund two new pool projects. Uh, those are for the Castle Rock Mobility Hub and the Bustang Maintenance Facility, and then um, increasing funding on the two existing pool projects within that pool. Um, so I'd be happy to take any questions. Otherwise, I do have the proposed motion on the bottom of your screen. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, one hand raised right now. Uh, so Commissioner Stewart, go ahead. Thank you very much, Chair. When appropriate, I'd like to make the motion to recommend uh, the adoption of the six amendments to the 2022-2025 Transportation Improvement Program. Thank you. Go ahead and make that. Uh, so it's always good to have it on the floor in a formal way. I make that motion. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Peck. I second it. Thank you. Uh, is there any discussion on these items? Seeing none, let me call for a vote. 
All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Aye. No opposed. Uh, thank you. Uh, this will move uh, to the uh, board meeting tomorrow then. Item two. Thank you, Josh. And you have this one as well. Yes. Um, I'm going to believe you should be seeing a presentation in full screen. Yes. Can you confirm? Perfect. Excellent. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, as many RTC members should recall, um, we did a uh, come into some new money uh, earlier, uh, including some federal COVID-19 relief funds, as well as some funding that was rolled over uh, in the TIP. And we made some funding decisions through our TIP wait lists earlier this spring. Uh, one result of that was that several of the wait lists were depleted and we wanted to pad those out a bit um, in case new funding were to come down the pipeline that we had projects ready and waiting to absorb that funding. Plus the garage. Um, I thought they'd be here by now. So we did okay, hold whatever. a supplemental waitlist call for projects uh, in order to gather some new projects to add to those waitlists. Although no funding is available for those projects at this time, if it were to come available, we would fund those projects off the waitlist according to our established waitlist policy. Um, any projects that would be selected, we would add after any existing waitlist projects. Um, so that uh, in rank order, those existing projects would come first uh, to be considered for additional funding. So the call for projects was held um, earlier this year between April and June. Uh, we did set uh, funding targets for each of our wait lists. That was based on an approximation of about one year's worth of funding, less any existing projects on the wait lists. Um, so based on that, it was decided that regional share and three subregions would be eligible to submit, and you can see their funding targets in the right-hand column of the table on your screen. Uh, we did receive eight eligible applications during the call for projects, and as you can see, all of those, uh, the total funding requested was either at or below the funding targets for each of the eligible wait lists. So Dr. Cog's staff uh, scored all of the applications. There were six staff members that uh, collectively scored them. And then those scores were turned over to a project review panel made up of a representative of each of the sub-regional forums, as well as CDOT and RTD uh, to develop a recommendation. The panel ended up recommending that all, of, all eight projects be added to the wait lists in their score order. So um, you have the complete uh, proposed wait lists in your packet, but uh, the affected ones, I'll just run through very quickly. Um, so for the regional share that had been completely depleted. So in order, uh, the new projects proposed to be added would be Lone Tree, Boulder County, and Castle Pines. For the Adams wait list, after the two existing projects on the wait list, we would be adding uh, Thornton's study. On the Jefferson waitlist, after the existing project on that waitlist, uh, we'd be adding the Evergreen Parks and Rec project, Golden and Lakewood in that order. And finally, on the Southwest Weld waitlist, uh, we would be adding the Mead project. Um, so that is the uh, proposal. I'm happy to take any questions. Otherwise, uh, I have a proposed motion for your consideration on the screen. Thank you, Josh. Very good. Uh, that seems to have gone really well. I appreciate that. Uh, do we have any discussion on this uh, uh, measure? Would anyone care to make the motion? Commissioner Cook? Yeah, I'll make the motion to recommend to the Dr. Cog Board of Directors that they add the supplemental projects to the fiscal year 2022 to, to 2025 Transportation Improvement Program waitlist in ranked order. But I did Thank have you. a question if I could. Um, Certainly, also, and, and I meant I meant Director Cook. Sorry. No, that's fine. No, no worries. No, go ahead. Um, uh, can we get a second first, please? Uh, I would win. Say. All right. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, uh, Shelley. Okay. Great. Thanks. Um, so, Josh, if uh, if money becomes available, um, it, it sounds like the projects are funded in the order of ranking. But what if there's money sufficient to to um, to fund one of the the below um, projects? That's my cat, sorry. Um, then 
do you what what's the process then do you wait until money accumulates to fund the top one or do you sometimes skip and and fund one below it sure um so the the process is uh included in our uh tip policy um essentially we would first contact the first project on the wait list and ask them if they would be willing to take that uh, reduced amount that was not enough to fully fund their project um, but if they would be willing to move forward with that with that smaller amount they have sort of the right of first refusal they can either take that smaller amount or say no in which case they remain on the wait list and it moves down to the next project and so on and so on until uh, one project were to accept that funding great thanks so much mm -hmm. thank you josh and just to clarify for me the the project that would defer would maintain its spot on the uh, its ranking on the list correct that's correct okay thank you it, it would simply be that the amount that was available was was not uh, discreet enough or or uh, separate enough to be uh, moved forward in a package correct great all right all right, we have a motion on the floor. Uh, do we have any other questions or comments from members? Uh, seeing none other than Shelly, your hand is still up. I assume you, you don't have a question, correct? Thank you. All right, um, everyone uh, in favor of moving this to the board uh, tomorrow, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Are there any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries, and this will move forward uh, tomorrow night. And we will move on to item three, uh, project funding recommendation for the community mobility planning and implementation set aside. And uh, this is Brad, I believe. Yes, Brad. It is. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as indicated in today's packet, uh, my name is Brad Calvert. Uh, I'm Dr. Cog's Director of Regional Planning and Development, and I'm here this morning to walk you through uh, today's requested uh, action. Um, Dr. Cog's staff is seeking an action from RTC recommending that fiscal year 22-23 community mobility planning and implementation uh, studies and projects to the Dr. Cog board. Um, you'll likely hear me shorten the name of that set aside to CMPI, uh, so I wanted to give you that heads up in case I switch to acronym mode uh, relatively quickly. Uh, Dr. Cog's Transportation Advisory Committee reviewed and concurred with staff's recommendation at their meeting in August, uh, so this item is coming with a recommendation uh, from tech uh, as well. Um, I don't have a PowerPoint presentation, um, so be, I'll be relying on the memo and attachment for this item to provide uh, background information, but Josh, who I think is running our screen, knows this process well, so he'll, he'll probably be able to keep up very easily. Um, uh, with the original investment from the board in this two years uh, portion of the set aside and funds that were actually combined and rolled in uh, from a previous cycle, we had approximately $3 million available uh, to support planning studies and small infrastructure projects uh, through this set aside. Um, uh, the CMPI set aside uses, for background, sort of a two stage uh, application process. Uh, the first phase involves a letter of intent uh, and a consultation with Dr. Cog's staff, and then a final application uh, as part of that second phase. Uh, we received 20 applications in total. Uh, 14 on the sort of planning uh, study side of the set aside, and then six on the small infrastructure uh, side of the set aside. Um, applications were evaluated by Dr. Cog's uh, Regional Planning and Development Division, my shop, as well as the Transportation Planning and Operations uh, Division. Additionally, uh, several CDOT staff uh, served as resources to, to the review panel uh, during project uh, evaluation. Um, project review panel recommendations are shown in the table included in the body of the memo, which Josh is scrolling to. Um, you'll see that both of these distinct uh, uh, set-aside categories actually have remaining funds uh, based on the initial review of the project uh, review panel. Um, so that gets to one of the items in the memo. Uh, Dr. Cog's staff is further recommending um, an additional project for funding during this two-year cycle. Um, so to accommodate uh, that staff recommendation, we're recommending that the remaining funds from both sides of the set aside be combined, um, and then that those pooled funds uh, that remain be awarded to the City of Thornton uh, Transit Study, um, which was the next application uh, in terms of scoring and rank order. With one sort of interesting caveat here, um, you may note uh, in the attachment that the City of Thornton 
uh, application and the town of Superior application on the planning side of things actually had the same score. Uh, but for the sake of working through the process, because the town of Superior's uh, study could ultimately be accommodated with the funding available. It was it was seen to be the higher ranking project, but it all worked out, uh, at least in staff's mind, uh, that we were able to uh, make a recommendation to to fund uh, both of those uh, valuable studies. Uh, so, attachment one for this item uh, are all the sort of notes, all the applications that were submitted, as well as the final recommended studies and projects that are included uh, in the proposed uh, motion. Those are highlighted in green. Uh, in the table on your screen. Um, and as a note, um, all projects uh, recommended for awards are receiving the full amount of federal funds requested uh, in their application. Um, so with that, that concludes my quick overview. Uh, staff has proposed a motion uh, for this item uh, in the memo. Happy to answer any questions folks might have. Excellent, thank you. Uh, let's go to questions. Uh, any member have questions on this uh, list and on this uh, motion? I don't see any. Uh, would a member like to make a motion then to uh, recommend this to the board? Win, Director Shaw, go ahead. Thank you. I move to recommend to the Dr. Cog Board of Directors the studies and projects recommended by staff to be funded in the fiscal year 2022-2023 cycle of the CPI set aside and shift the remaining small infrastructure funding to fully fund the Thornton Transit Study. Thank you, uh, Director Shaw. Director Peck. I second the motion. Thank you very much. Is there any discussion? Any comments? Uh, I don't see anybody with a comment, but I did see briefly that the person on the phone uh, was, was highlighted. I don't know if that meant uh, that uh, you have a question. Okay. No, this is uh, Mike. I was just ready to vote. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, Zoom puts a yellow box around whoever is wherever the noise is coming from, I guess. So thank you. Uh, so uh, everyone, uh, all those in favor of moving this to the board, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, please say nay. Hearing none, the motion uh, carries and this will move forward to the board uh, tomorrow night. And then uh, finally, our last action item, let me go back to the top of my agenda. Oh, actually, let me look at my screen here. Uh, Non-discrimination plans update. Uh, Alvin, uh, are you uh, on here? Yep, I'm on. And I'm actually gonna have Josh go ahead and share his screen just for some technical difficulties. But Excellent. I'm bringing before you the action item from last month's informational briefing on our non-discrimination plans. So we'll be seeking an action from RTC this morning. In terms of the presentation, since you did get a background of what those three plans were last meeting, we wanted to provide some more information about the process staff took to actually get to these three plans that are before you and provide some next steps since our Title VI non-discrimination work is continuing beyond these three plans adoption. So we had a kickoff back in May of this year. We had an internal kickoff where we just talked with staff looking at what the scope was for each of these three plans. Then we also coordinated with our federal partners and our state partners just to make sure they were also aware of the scope we were looking at. And if there were any red flags we should be looking at as we were developing these three plans. Uh, it included a public review and comment period for the month of July. That also included direct reviews by CDOT, RTD, Federal Highway and FTA. And this is all getting us to our final deadline of October 1st, where we're needing to submit these to FDA for approval. We also did a peer review of other MPOs uh, that included looking at our partners across the state, as well as MPOs across the nation. And then we also wanted to make sure we were looking at MPOs that are designated recipients of FTA's 5310 funding, just to see how they're meeting these FTA requirements and how we could also meet them. So we did a review of each of these MPOs in terms of whether they had Title VI plans, ADA plans, or their LEP plans. As a reminder, our Title VI implementation plan is our most expansive plan. It demonstrates that we have the resources and the procedures in place to provide all of our services in a non-discriminatory manner. Uh, it provides a catalog of the previous three years of Title VI related activities especially how our major plans and programs responded to non-discrimination. And then it's also a way that we inform the public and our recipients of how we review our different programs, our projects, and the recipients themselves to make sure it's all in compliance with Title VI. 
It includes a demographic profile of the Denver region. So it has those seven vulnerable populations that from the 2050 RTP. It also overlays those into a transportation investment analysis using the short range investments from our tip. It outlines all of our different policies and procedures like our meeting accommodation language that we include on all of our agendas. It looks at how we monitor our subrecipients now that we're a designated recipient of FTA 5210 funding and we're granting that to grantees. We have to make sure they're in compliance with Title VI. It outlines what data we collect and what's available to staff and local governments and how that's used to make sure all of our services, plans or programs are non-discriminatory. And it also provides a high level summary of our public participation over the last three years and how we've just made sure our major plans and programs have been reaching out to vulnerable populations in the region. Our second plan is our limited English proficiency plan. The goal is to ensure all residents in the region can participate in Dr. Cog's activities. So to do that, it identifies who might need language assistance, the ways assistance is provided and how we let them know that there is assistance available. It also describes any staff training that's required. So making sure staff in the office know what's available physically in the office, online available to them and over the phone in case they need to interact with anyone who speaks a language other than English. The LEP plan is centered around a four factor analysis that we do to see what is reasonable for Dr. Cog to provide for non-English -lang non languages. Uh, the first factor is the number or proportion of limited English proficient persons in, who might come in contact with the program. Uh, that for the region is about 8% of folk five years old or older speak English, English less than very well, so we consider them LEP persons. Factor two is the frequency with which LEP individuals might come in contact with Dr. Cog. That varies depending on our program. Uh, for example, our Way to Go program has about 22 requests on average per year for assistance in a language other than English. Uh, compare that to our AAA Area Agency on Aging that receives about 6,700 requests each year. Uh, factor three is the nature and importance of the program. So Dr. Cog uses federal funds for short range planning, long range planning, but also to administer uh, contracts for agencies that are delivering meals across the region. And then factor four is what are the resources that are available to Dr. Cog. So while we do not fully translate all of our plans, we do make sure in the promotion, engagement, education phases of our different plans and programs, we're providing key information in languages other than English. And we also make sure staff are aware of the resources available to them in the office, online and over the phone to make sure they can assist someone in a language other than English. And then our final plan is the Americans with Disabilities Act Program Access Plan, just outlining the requirements that apply to Dr. Cog under the ADA and how we make sure all of our programs, activities and services are accessible. That includes making sure any renovations or alterations to our office space comply with the ADA. We have features on our website that allow someone to adjust the contrast, adjust the font sizes, make it safe if you're experiencing seizures. We discuss how our public meetings are accessible from different modes, uh, physical accessibility, what meeting accommodations we might provide. We go over our planning process, how we ensure individuals with disabilities are included in that, either through the data we use to see what needs might exist or reaching out to them specifically. And then another piece also new based on our designated recipient status is monitoring our grantees to make sure that they are also in compliance with the ADA. Like I mentioned, we had a 30 day public review period. So we ended up sending out an e-blast to over 2,400 contacts. Uh, that had about a 36% e-blast open rate, 161 total link clicks, which is on par with our other e-blasts. Uh, we had about 1,000 impressions on, across our social media channels. Um, and our web page where each of these plans was sitting had over 100 web page hits. So we were able to track all of these different metrics over the last 30 days during our public review period to see how we measured with our other plans and programs that we've been putting out. Our next steps, uh, we're obviously right here before you for a recommendation to the board. Uh, we'll go tomorrow before the board to meet our federal deadline of October 1st. And then even post adoption, we have some discrete steps that staff are taking. We're looking at translating all three of our non-discrimination plans into Spanish. Uh, we've previously only translated our LEP plan into Spanish, but we're looking at doing all three this round. Uh, staff are also looking at developing accessibility procedures for all of our different videos, documents, social media, making sure across our channels we're being as accessible as possible. And then there's our continuous review that we continue to do before our next three-year update cycle for these plans. So the motion before you to frame the discussion is on your screen. I'm happy to take any questions or comments staff from RTC members. Hey, Alvin, do we have any questions from members? Um, 
I have one uh, that I don't know uh, you might whether you might be able to answer it, but the 36% open rate on the e-blast from my experience doing uh, that sort of thing, that seems like a pretty good number. And I'm wondering if, if you know, how does that compare to open rates on other Dr. Cog uh, uh, email blasts? Yeah, when I saw that number, I thought it was pretty great as well. Um, we've yeah. been on average, I believe in the 30s for our different e-blasts. So uh, I actually had our public engagement planner check on some of the previous e-blasts we sent just to see how our Title VI work was doing. And it was great to see that it was on par with some of our other more uh, noticeable work like our MBRTP or stuff like that. Sure. Thank you, that's good. Uh, that's very good. Uh, any members have questions, comments? Would a member uh, like to make uh, the proposed motion? Thank you, uh, Director Shaw. Thank you. Uh, I move to recommend the Board of Directors adopt the Title VI Implementation Plan and the Associated Limited English Proficiency Plan and Americans with Disabilities Act Program Access Plan. Thank you very much, Director Busick. I'll second that motion, thanks. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or comment? Uh, uh, Director Busek, your hand is still up. Do you have a comment? Or, oh, your hand is now down. <laughs> Thank you. No, no problem. Uh, seeing no comments, uh, let me call for the vote then on this motion. Uh, all those in favor of moving this to the board, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, please say no or nay. Uh, hearing none, uh, the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, let me go back to my agenda. Oh, there it is on the screen also. Uh, we move on to item eight, uh, member comment, other matters by members. Do we have any comments from uh, members? Uh, Doug, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and I just wanted to invite members of the RTC uh, to our board meeting tomorrow night, we are going to have a continued conversation uh, related to the uh, greenhouse gas emission reduction rule uh, that, that's uh, proceeding through, through CDOT right now. Um, you know, it'll just give you basically a flavor for the conversation that we're having. Um, staff has, is, is proposing or at least recommending some options to, to improve the rule. And um, I would, I would welcome you all to attend. I know you have nothing else to do on a, on a Wednesday evening, but if you can jump in, um, we, I would imagine that the conversation will begin, I'm gonna say around seven o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Director Rex. We'll hold you to that at seven o'clock time. Uh, next meeting will be uh, October 19th and uh, seeing no other business or no other comments by members, we will be adjourned. Thank you all for attending today. Have a good day. Bye. Bye everyone, be safe. Thank Bye. you. Thank you.